Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics. This lecture is entitled Basic Shift Registers. Okay, so before we begin technical discussions of some of the shift register applications, which we'll be detailing in this particular unit, let's just have a very basic discussion about serial versus parallel. And believe it or not, this analogy that I use will greatly simplify your analysis of shift registers. Okay, the analogy I like to use is a bus. People are waiting for a bus. And the bus, in this particular example, I know the picture doesn't show it, it's got two doors. One's an entrance on the left, one's an exit on the right. And when it shows up to the bus stop, it's empty. There's nothing in the bus. And what happens, so we're right there. And what happens is, is the bus can only load people on a transition from zero to one, i.e. a positive clock edge. First cl positive clock edge comes along, what happens? Well, Mr. Red gets on and takes the first available seat. What happens in the second clock edge? Well, what happens is Blue wants to get on, but Red's in the first available seat there. Red's going to shift over, and then Blue's going to get on and take that first seat. Third clock pulse gets on. What happens here? Well, Green wants to get on, but Blue's in his seat. Blue wants to move forward, but Red's in his seat. So what's Red do? Red moves. Blue moves. Green moves. Get the picture? They're shifting. Okay, what happens? Finally, the fourth clock pulse. Well, Gray wants to get on, but Green's in his seat. So green wants to move up, but blue's in his seat. Blue wants to move up, but red's in his seat. So what happens? Red shifts, blue shifts, green shifts, and gray gets on. It's that simple. I don't know what red is. It could be a logical zero. It could be a logical one. I don't care what it is, but look at what it's doing. It's shifting. It's shifting right. Okay, what's blue doing? It's shifting right. What's green doing? It's shifting right. What's gray doing? Well, it's only got one clock pulse so far. It's just been loaded on. So how many clock pulses did it take to load this four-bit piece of information? One, two, three, four. So to load a particular number of bits, it will take that many clock pulses. What about to unload it? Okay, now what we've defined there was serial input. I want serial output. There's a single door output. What I've got to do is go ahead and add another clock pulse. What happens is red gets off. Where does he go? I have no idea. You know, he's going to some other area in there. It could be some additional stages, perhaps. What does blue do? He shifts up. Green goes up to the next seat. Gray goes up to the next seat. What gets on? I don't know. Garbage could be Mr. Gray's dog that was also just sitting there. You know, it could be a string of zeros. It could be a string of one. Who knows what's being shifted in? Let's pretend it was a logical zero that was shifted on. So it took an additional clock pulse to get that red piece of data off. How much, how many more clock pulses would it take to get that original four-bit string off? The answer is four. So to load, to seriously, serially load something, it takes the number of clock pulses equivalent to the number of bits to serially unload a shift register, it will take the number of clock pulses equivalent to the number of bits. So this is in stark contrast to parallel. Parallel is one of those occasions when your bus driver has been drinking and runs into a fully loaded propane truck. Everybody gets out the windows and the doors and the cracks in the ceiling. Everyone's basically simultaneously leaving this device. That is parallel out. Parallel in is parallel, except we're just going in full on Dukes of Hazard style, jumping in through every single window, jumping in through all the doors, basically simultaneously loading. Okay, and using our seat analogy, how many clock pulses does it take to serially load? excuse me, parallel load something. Well, one clock pulse. What happens is if there are four doors available for four bits, red gets on at the same time blue gets on, at the same time green gets on, at the same time gray gets on. Basically, everyone is simultaneously parallel, parallelly load it. Parallel, in, parallel output, basically everyone can get off the bus simultaneously. We have discussed absolutely no technology, but we have discussed four pretty important concepts. I've already got an idea of what a timing diagram is going to look like. We've discussed serial in, everybody's in a line coming in, serial out, and realize when it's serial out, something else is coming in. What's coming in? I have no idea. It could be garbage, it could be zeros, it could be ones, it could be Mr. Gray's dog. You don't know what's coming in. It could be another number in that sequence, okay? Serial out, it's a single door out, parallel in, everyone can simultaneously load, parallel out, everyone can simultaneously unload or be available. Let's just talk about some very simple implementations of these using some sequential devices. This right here is a combination of D flip-flops, where the previous stage is D, excuse me, the previous stage is Q0, is the next 
stages D input. This is a shift right, serial in, serial out, shift register. Where's my input? Well, right here, it's the lowest stage. Where's my output? It is the one door that is the output. Notice I do not have access to Q0, Q1, or Q2. Okay, so it's serial in, there's one input. Serial out, there's one output. Which direction am I shifting? Well, Q0 is going to D1. Q1 is going to D2. Q2 is going to D3. Which direction? Obviously, shifting right. Okay, in this particular application, it's shifting right. What's the MSB and what's the LSB? I have no idea. Define it, figure it out, and stay organized. So what I can do is, let's say this is the MSB stage, and I want to shift in the number 5, the binary number 5. What is the binary number 5? It's 0, 1, 0, 1. MSB to LSB. If I've defined this one as the MSB, I've got to put it in in this fashion. So if I'm loading the binary number 50101, first clock pulse, what happens? The zero gets on. Second clock pulse, zero goes there, one gets on. Third clock pulse, zero shifts over, one shifts over, zero gets on, the one is remaining. Finally, fourth clock pulse, what happens? Zero, one, zero, one. Those are the outputs. However, the only one that I have access to is Q3. I've got to wait for another clock pulse to get the one, another clock pulse to get the zero, and another clock pulse to get the one clear. I've got to make sure that these things are clear to begin with. Otherwise, I, I might have garbage data on there or data from a previous transaction. What do I do? I can use these active low clear inputs. Simultaneously clear every single one of those stages by giving each and every stage an active low clear. Clears the whole thing out so I can use it. Let's modify that same diagram ever so slightly. This is a serial in parallel out shift register, and I have done nothing to this except punch a hole inside the box and make Q0, Q1, and Q2 available. When I say the box, what I'm talking about is here. I've taken this serial input. There is one input, one output. Just punch a hole here, here, and here, and you've got access to those particular stages. Which direction is it shifting? It's still shifting right, and I can still clear each and every single stage by issuing an active low clear to each stage. Okay, here's another configuration. Here's a parallel in, parallel out. Let me draw something on here real quick. So here's a parallel in, parallel out shift register. What I've drawn here is an incredibly simplified diagram of such. What I'm trying to show is there are two paths for D input based upon mode. In this di diagram, I've drawn red as load mode, blue as shift right mode. So there is basically two modes. I can either load something in parallel or shift it right. And I am not, I can never simultaneously load and shift. Okay, it's one mode or the other. In load mode, I go ahead and put that binary five on there. Basically I'm loading five. This is the MSB. For this particular application, I've defined that as the MSB to the LSB. In load mode, clock pulse comes along. What happens? That is loaded to the output. Zero, one, zero, one. And then I switch it to shift right mode. What happens? The blue inputs are available. I know there is logic that can be hooked to D for each stage's D inputs. What I'm trying to do is simplify these diagrams. And you can go ahead and look up these diagrams, but I think they just really kind of detract from the function of these things. This is just kind of a functional description of it. In shift right mode, what happens? Well, first clock pulse comes along. What happens is that guy goes there. That guy goes there. That guy goes there. Where's this guy go? He's out of there. What comes in here? I don't know. Garbage. Let's pretend it's the zero that comes in. What is our output stages? What do they look like? It should look like this. There you go. So that first leading zero is shifted out and he's gone. What am I left with? MSB to LSB. I'm left with one, zero, one, zero. And if this is the MSB, what number do I have? I have decimal 10. So five was my entrance. I shifted it right one time. What have I come up with? It's a 10. This is another application of a basic shift register lazy math. In addition to all that storage and memory, anytime I shift something right, I multiply it by two. Anytime I shift something left, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I'm dividing it by two. Uh, finally, for parallel in, parallel out here, I can go ahead and simultaneously clear every single stage by just issuing an active low clear command to each stage.
let's add this guy in here. Parallel in serial layout. Well, the only thing that's different between this guy and the last one here, there's only one output. So that's my serial output right there, and I should, should say shift right output. In load mode, the red connections are active, and those D broadside load inputs are routed to the individual D inputs. Basically right here, these broadside inputs are routed to the respective D inputs, and then when it goes into shift mode, it's again shifting previous stages Q output to the next stages D. And again, I can go ahead and clear this whole thing by issuing an active load clear to each stage. We've talked about serial in, talked about serial out, we've talked about parallel in, we've talked about serial parallel out. We have only discussed thus far shifting right. We can potentially shift left also. And if I created a device that could do shifting right and shifting left, I would create a pretty universal device, i.e. a shift left, shift right, shift register. And in its most basic form, these are the diagrams I'm going to use. When it's in shift right mode, what's it doing? It's taking that stage's input, going to its output, which is being to the next stage's inputs, to the next stage's outputs, so on and so forth. I'm shifting it right. Look at shift left mode. It's taking this one's output, making that one go into that one's input, that one's output to that one's input, that one's output to this one's input, and out. Which direction have we gone? Despite all those little spirals there, we've gone left. So I can potentially shift it left. Like I said, I can combine these two functionalities to create a shift left, shift right, shift register. And I know there's logic on those D inputs right there, but what I'm implying here, in shift right mode, only the red connections are available. In shift left mode, only the blue connections are available. So, and again, look at the look at the differences there too. It's just the D inputs and it's just the Q outputs. There is no no other data that's incoming there. I'm just shifting what that previous stage had to the next stage, depending on which direction I'm going into. Now we've got a device that has two modes, shift left and shift right. What if I combine this functionality with a parallel load? There you go. Here is a device that when it's in load mode, i.e. right there, when it's in load mode, what are my D inputs? Well, these broadside loads. Think about broadside. When a ship is hit broadside, it's a pretty bad thing. It's basically hit, getting hit from the side. Everything's available. That's when it's issued a load command, those D3 through D0 inputs are routed to the respective Q3, Q0 inputs, excuse me, outputs. When it's in shift right mode, what's it doing? It's taking this stages, going to that stages, going to this one, going to that one. So it's shifting it right. When it's in left mode, it's going that way. You can never simultaneously shift right and left and load at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. You can't simultaneously do these things. Let's make this a truly universal device and have a parallel output. So the last diagram here, the only difference between this diagram and this diagram is this. Basically, I've punched a hole in the box. I now have access to all particular stages, inputs, and outputs. This is wrapping up our discussion of basic shift registers. We have not discussed time and diagrams, which we'll go into some greater technical detail, detail about these, but I don't want you to forget the contents of this lecture because it is very easy to get lost. You cannot see the forest because of all the trees. So that's a classic example of this. Don't worry so much about propagation delays or what's hooked to what. What does a shift register do? It shifts. What does a counter do? It counts in its most basic form. That's what those things do. Don't confuse a shift register for a counter and don't confuse a counter for a shift register, despite the fact that they look kind of the same in the circuits. What's a shift register do? It's shifting things right if it's in right mode. What's it doing if it's in left mode? It's shifting things left. Use the bus seat analogy. What does that person represent? It could be a logical zero, it could be a logical one. So we're going to go into some technical discussions about each one of these configurations, whether serial in, serial out, parallel in, or parallel out, and do some discussions about timing diagrams. But one real quick thing before we go here, what if I took this thing's output and fed it back to his input? That's a pretty neat application that you may see a little bit later. It's known as a ring counter. All right, so I can previously load something on there and then just continually run this thing in a sequence. Now, what if I did the following modification? What if I did that same ring, but just before it got to the input, inverted it? Okay, this is a really neat application. This is called a twisted ring or sometimes a Johnson counter. Okay, commonly used waveform generator to test out logic circuits. We'll see how these things work in a little bit here. So in its most basic form, what do shift registers do? They shift, okay? And if you can just get that through your head, these timing diagram analyses will be substantially easier.